Hello, Professor Toy Box here, along with Sorcerer's Apprentice Mickey, and we're back in my Fantasia Toy Box for our next episode of Toy Box Tutorials. Before I begin today's lesson, I just want to take a moment and let you know that there will not be any new videos next week. Now that the COVID restrictions are starting to lift here where I live, and the trees are starting to change color, <laughs> although they're not doing that in my toy box, um, Mrs. Toy Box and I are going to take a little time to get out of the house and enjoy the fall colors, so I'm going to suspend my usual programming schedule for a week or so. But we've still got today's episode, so let's get to it. I'm going to move on to the main house in the Magician's Castle interior now. And um, now that Mickey can get the combination to the color pressure plate puzzle and turn off the magical barrier blocking the door, he can now get inside the house. And if we come on into the house, I've added a few pillars that weren't here before. These are from the blocks drawer, as well as some stairs and a little platform here. And that's all I've really done, just used a few blocks to add a few decorations. And inside the house, Mickey's going to encounter a fellow apprentice who's going to be our first mission giver in this toy box. Mickey learns that while the magician's been sleeping, and while Mickey's been dealing with the fallout of the spell that he cast on the brooms, one of the magician's enemies has decided to seize this opportunity to try to take over the castle. And this is the enemy who's created the bears that Mickey's encountered so far. And to break the spell of the enemy, Mickey needs to cast a spell of his own. And to do that, he needs to collect some ingredients. So today I'm going to show you how to create a simple collection quest. Now I've already shown you how to build such a quest using a single collectible. We did that back in episode 22, and we did that again recently here with the collectible that we used here inside of the stone circle. Um, but what do you want to do? But what do you do if you want to have the player collect more than one collectible? Well, you could hook up each collectible to a Logic And, which is a toy we covered back in episode 47. And if you remember, there's one we placed over here that we used earlier, so that might jog your memory a little bit. But you could hook up each collectible to a Logic And, uh, so that when the player picks up the collectible, it inputs into the Logic And, and then once all the collectibles have been picked up, the logic and would broadcast its complete signal, and you could use that to end the quest. But that's a lot of work. And fortunately, there is another way to do it that's a lot simpler, and that is to use a collectible tracker. And that's our topic for today's lesson. So we'll come in here to the Creativa Toys and go to the left. I had it on this earlier. There it is, the collectible tracker. And so this is going to be the basis for our collectible quest. And for right now, we'll sit this out here up on top of this wall. And if we open the properties for this, you'll notice there are two properties. There's a collectible type, and if you select that, this is a list of all of the collectibles that are available. And so you can have this collectible tracker keep track of all of the collectibles, or you can have it keep track of a specific kind of collectible. And you can pick from the list. And for me, for the spell ingredients, I'm going to use the mushroom collectible. And so I'm going to select that. And then you have the option to show that collectible, or those collectibles, on the radar. And when you do that, they'll show up in the lower left corner. And I'm going to do that for my collection quest. Under the logic connections, there's two trigger signals that this toy will broadcast. When you pick up an individual collectible, in our case an individual mushroom, it'll broadcast this trigger signal, collectible collected by. And if you select that, um, it could be any player or a specific player or a team. And so you could use that, for example, to hook up to a counter if you wanted the player to have to collect a certain number of collectibles. There's also this one that says when the final collectible is collected, 
So when the player picks up the last mushroom in our case, this trigger signal would be broadcast. And we're going to actually going to use this in our collectible quest here shortly. Now, there are a couple of behaviors associated with this as well. And in order to demonstrate that, let me hook up a quick button here. Oops, there we go. And I'll just drop this here. So if we select the button and open the logic menu and do a new logic connection when pressed, if we come over to the collectible tracker, you'll notice the menu is available and we can connect to that. And there are two behaviors. So you can have this toy reset, which is good if you want to have a reset button in your toy box, which we do and we are going to use. And so if you've already collected all the mushrooms, for example, and you want to reset this so you can use it again or play that quest again, you can use the reset trigger here, the reset behavior to do that. There's also this remove all, and what that does is hide all of the collectibles. And so if we come out here and we drop a couple of collectibles down, and oh, we're going to need a sound effect generator too, by the way. So let's just go ahead and drop that before we go over to the left here to the collectibles. So here's all your collectibles in the gameplay toys drawer. We've got gems, we got all these different things. And again, I'm going to use the mushroom collectible for me. But I'll go ahead and drop down a potion bottle as well. And so if we come out over here now, and I've got that button hooked up to remove all on the collectible tracker, and we push the button, you'll notice the mushroom has disappeared but it hasn't really disappeared. It's still there. It's just been hidden. And so the collectible tracker, you can use that to hide all of the collectibles that it's keeping track of. So that's pretty useful. And I'll go ahead and delete that. And we don't really need the button anymore, so let me take that out as well. And in my case, I am going to leave this set to be the mushroom collectible. Because, as I pointed out earlier, I do have a crystal shard collectible over here in the middle of this uh, stone circle. And so I need to be able to differentiate from that. It might be kind of nice to be able to use several different kinds of collectibles for different ingredients in the spell here. But um, we'll have to stick with the mushrooms for now so we don't get confused with that collectible over there. Alright, so to build our simple collection quest, we're going to need a uh, mission giver. And so I'm going to use a friend generator to put down the mission giver, and that will save a little bit of memory. And we're also going to need a radar marker, and a text displayer, and a dynamic trigger. So those four toys there will be for the mission giver. The collectible tracker over here will keep track of when we finish collecting all of the collectibles. And then we're going to go ahead and set up another mission goal because we could use this to end the quest, but I'm going to have the player come back here. And so I'm going to set up a second um, radar marker and dynamic trigger around another point that I want the player to return to because I want them to bring back all of those uh, ingredients and put them in a cauldron. And so I'm going to use, and we're also going to use an effects generator. Let's go all out on this. And an action enforcer. And the action enforcer and the sound generator, I'm going to use those as I have before to indicate when the quest is finished. So those are the toys we've got. And a couple of more things we're going to need. I'm going to need a couple of locators. Because I have to tell that friend generator where to put the uh, fellow apprentice. So I'm going to place that here. And it's already facing with that little blue dot facing me, so that's perfect. And I'm going to place another one right here. 
like that. And up under the decorations drawer, if you've got the uh, Dunbrock uh, toy box game from 2.0, you'll have this witch's cauldron. So I'm going to place that right there on top of that locator. And that's where I want Mickey to bring all of the ingredients after he's collected them. So let's go ahead and build our collection quest. And we'll start with the friend generator. So we'll do a new locator connection on the friend generator. And I want the friend to generate at this locator. And under the properties, we're going to come to the behavior. And I want this uh, friend to be standing still when we first encounter him so he doesn't wander off. And that's really all we need under there. And then to generate this friend, there's no point in generating him until this door is removed. And so we're going to come over here and do a new logic connection on the stone gate. When that gate is opened, then we'll come over to our friend generator. And we'll come down to the toy box category. And I'm going to use the Grand Duke. We'll make him our mission giver. All right, and just because we need a way to kick that off without running through that whole quest, <laughs> let's go ahead and put a button in here. I guess maybe I should have left that other button there. So under Creativa Toys, we'll hook this button up to do the same thing. So a new logic connection when pressed. And this is just temporary. But again, we'll come back to the toy box and generate the Grand Duke. Okay, for our radar marker, we're going to hook that up to that locator. And that'll be where we want that to appear. And under the properties for the radar marker, under the beacon type, I'm going to set this to be a yellow exclamation point for because it's for the main quest. The beacon location is the connected locator. And I want this on when the player first comes into the toy box. So there we are. The dynamic trigger, we're going to hook up to that same locator. And under the properties for the dynamic trigger, the target again is going to be the locator. And for the trigger distance, let's set this to be four. So Mickey's going to have to get to the top of those stairs before uh, this guy will acknowledge him. And then for the text displayer, under the properties for that, we'll set the text duration to four the textile to banner. Okay, so that's everything set up for the mission giver. Let's go ahead and connect the logic. So on the dynamic trigger, when the player approaches our mission giver, or rather approaches the locator where he'll be standing, we'll do a new logic connection on entered by player any. We're going to come over to the text displayer, and under the defense category, we'll say collect the coins. That's the closest thing we've got because I can't tell him to collect the mushrooms. And also on the dynamic trigger, we'll do a new logic connection when entered by player any. We'll turn off this radar marker. And uh, that's really all that dynamic trigger needs to do. And then on the radar marker, we'll do a new logic connection. When it's deactivated, we'll turn off the dynamic trigger so that that message doesn't keep appearing as we walk up. So there is our mission giver. So he tells us to go off and collect the coins, really collect the mushrooms. And then away we go. 
And then we'll need some mushrooms to collect. So we'll come back down to the gameplay toys drawer. And for right now, I'll just place a couple of them here in this room. Like that. Then we don't have to go running around chasing those. So the player then goes off and finds those mushroom collectibles. And when they do, the collectible tracker is going to keep track of that. So on the collectible tracker, we're going to do a new logic connection. When the final collectible is collected and they collect the last mushroom, I want to bring them back here to this pot. And so I'm going to have a dynamic trigger and a radar marker hooked up to the locator under that pot. So I'm going to come over to the radar marker and activate that. And I want that dynamic trigger to be off as well, so we're going to have to have the collectible tracker turn that on. So when the final collectible is collected, we'll come over and turn on that dynamic trigger. And so the level starter will need to make sure that's off. So we're going to come over here to our level starter that we put down in an earlier episode. And we'll do a new logic connection on Catalyze. And we'll come over here to that dynamic trigger and make sure that's turned off. All right, so this radar marker, we're going to connect up to the locator that's under the pot. And uh, the same thing with that dynamic trigger. Connect up to that locator. And on this radar marker, under the properties, I'm going to set the beacon type to be a yellow arrow. Beacon location, once again, needs to be the locator. And this is going to stay off by default. So that's not going to come on until we pick up the final mushroom. For the dynamic trigger, under the properties for that, again, the target is going to be the locator. And the trigger distance, we'll set this one to be a little bit bigger because we have that pot sitting on top of it. I'm going to set this to be six. Okay. And there we go. So, to review, when we open up the gate over here to the house, or we press our little test button here, that's going to generate our townsperson in here, our mission giver. And when we approach him, the dynamic trigger will cause his radar marker to go off. And, uh... It will display some text. <laughs> Sorry, lost my train of thought there for a moment. And then we'll go off and collect the mushrooms. And then the collectible tracker, when we pick up the final mushroom, we'll turn on the radar marker and the dynamic trigger here to direct the player back to the pot. And when the player walks up to the pot, then this dynamic trigger, we're just going to do a new logic connection when entered by player any. First thing we'll do is turn off that radar marker. Second thing we'll do, new logic connection when entered by player any. We'll play our little musical fanfare that tells Mickey he's completed the quest. So under musical, we'll do fanfare. Under the dynamic trigger, new logic connection when entered by player any. We'll come to our action enforcer and we'll have all the players celebrate because we've broken the spell. And the other thing we'll do is I'd like to have some effect on that cauldron to let the player know that, uh, that they've completed the spell. And so on the effects generator, I'm going to do a new locator connection on that. And we're going to connect up to that same locator. And oops, on the dynamic trigger here, 
new logic connection when entered by player any. We'll come over to the effects generator and we're going to play one time under the smoke category, the smoke plume. So dumping the ingredients in will cause a huge <laughs> plume of smoke to go up. Okay, so that's our little side quest there. And I think that's everything. So that's how you'd use the collectible tracker. So let's go ahead and demonstrate this. So rather than go through that whole mission of opening up the door out there, we're going to come over to our little test button. So push the button. That causes the uh, townsperson to generate. So there he is. And well, I guess we can just hop down there. And so now when we approach him, he says, collect the coins. Whoops, we got too close to that other. <laughs> so we probably don't want to have him sitting up there because <laughs> that's too close to that cauldron. And that cauldron is still active. And actually, that's probably fine. We just need to... Uh, we just need to make sure that that um, dynamic trigger here is off. And it's not currently because uh, I haven't done anything with that level starter yet. And I don't really want to go push this button for the level starter because that's going to cause the brooms to start generating and other things. But, uh, oh well, we can... Let's go ahead and do that anyway. So we'll push the level starter. That'll turn off that dynamic trigger. And then we can go push that other button down there to reset. But before we do that, let's go ahead and hook up our reset button. So on the reset, we'll do a new logic connection when pressed. I want to come over and remove the townsperson in here. So we'll do a remove all. We're also going to want to new logic connection when pressed. We're going to want to reset those uh, radar markers. So we're going to activate that. Sorry, I should have done this before too, but that's okay. If you make a mistake, you can recover pretty easily, so you don't really have to worry about it. So we're going to go ahead and turn that back on, because when we approached the mission giver, that got turned off. We're going to come over to our reset button and do a new logic connection when pressed. We're going to make sure we turn off that radar marker. And we already turned this off when we pushed the level starter, so that's already taken care of. Last thing we want to do is new logic connection. When pressed, we need to reset the collectible tracker. like that. Okay, so now that we've done that, now we can come back to our reset button and push that button. Okay. And if you saw briefly there, that radar marker is back on. And you'll see that as we come out here. Okay, so now <laughs> the dynamic trigger under that pot is off, so we should be okay. Because I pushed the button that was connected to that level starter. So now we generate our townsperson. So now when we approach him, he says collect the coins. I can walk up here because this has not been turned on yet. It's not going to be until we pick up our mushrooms. We can pick up the first one. 
and you'll notice we have radar markers there for those. And then we pick up that one, and now you'll notice the radar marker is on over the pot. So when we walk up to the pot, here we go. We've completed our little quest. So that's the collectible tracker. Next time we're going to look at some different options for how to place the collectibles around our toy box so they don't always show up in the same place. And as I said earlier, that episode will air in two weeks because I'm taking a week off. So until next time, I want to thank you for watching my video today, and I hope you found it helpful. If so, please give it a like and leave a comment to let me know. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, you can do that by clicking on my photo in the lower right corner, and then you won't miss the next episode when it airs. That's all for me today. Take care.